Hi, it's me, Jane, with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. And I have a couple of acquisitions today. We went to Joanne's. And I got this book. I've been eyeing it a couple of weeks. And it's got some stunning photos in it. Beautiful stitch work. So I'm looking forward to playing with that for a little bit. A little bit later. One of the other things that I got was Nick Craig's. Um, I was so disappointed with the um, darn good yarns that I decided to give Nick Craig's a try. Um, I've seen, you know, some beautiful things come out of it. And of course, this is called the Golden Hour, and this is the April Nick Crate. Um, the precious moments right before the sun sets, when it's low in the west, cast ochre tones across the world. This is a time called Golden Hour. And here's the patterns. That's beautiful. Green's my favorite. Then again, that's beautiful too. This one is crochet. The other one is knit. <sighs> now the crowning moment. What color did we get? Um, they say that this is yarn by Audine Wools. And it's either Red Rock, Prickly Pear, Endless Sky or Natural. It's a Superwash Merino DK, 230 yards, and the value of that is considered $24 per skein. Having trouble getting it out. <gasps> oh, this is beautiful. Oh, look at that. I must have got Endless Sky. Yep, that's what it is. Endless sky. And you get two of those. Not just one, but two. Wow. That is beautiful. Two. I'm thrilled. That's it. That's all that's in there. Um, I'll go down and download my patterns in a little bit, but uh, just got that and thought I would open it up today. Crinkle, 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 so everyone could see that. I had um, a couple of skeins of the Cascade. More crinkle. Ultra Pima that I got a couple of months ago. And I've not skeined it up. I haven't had an opportunity to. And so I decided I would skein it up this today. This is yarn that's used for the breast prosthesis. Now I find it absolutely annoying. I was going to do center pole ball. Because I've already got another ball of this color ready to go. And I like to knit them two at a time and I've had a request for a pair that I don't have an extra pair already lined up ready to go but when I went to uh, wind it up out of the hank and this is one thing that annoys me about some of these hanks it's like whoever is doing the uh, yarn skein winder which is what it the item is what's normally used to do that to make the hanks apparently they weren't watching what they were doing so that the yarn was crisscrossing which makes even when you have this on the yarn swift because that's where it was at on the yarn swift it's almost impossible for it to come off the proper way. 
So I started on one end and so far I've gotten it undone this far. I had a friend that uh, passed away about a year ago and uh, she was our go-to woman for sewing in our ends and also she could untangle a skein and what seemed like nothing flat. She had a lot of um, patience with that kind of stuff. I don't. So I'm missing the uh, Virginia right now because that's who I would normally have help untangle this mess. But she's no longer living. She's gone on to the great crocheter's heaven upstairs. And it was kind of funny because this week we were at the fire hall. We were sewing ends into a couple of hats of the baby hats. We were all thinking about her. So anyway, that's basically what I'm doing today, trying to get this tangled mess undone so I can get it wound up so I can work on another set of knitted knockers. I thought I would also include, I'm going to post a picture here at the very end after you see some of the items that I got at Scraps and Skeins was able to get my husband to run over there in uh, this morning. Got some more freebies. I was basically looking for some lace. Didn't find any of it. But boy, they had the yarn out in the forest. They were doing a buy one, get one free. I'm hoping they'll extend that to Thursday. Plan on going back there Thursday because I have some items I want to take up that I can't use and I can't see them going to waste. So to keep it out of the landfill I'll take and donate it to Scraps and Skeins. And uh, anyway I'm going to show you a picture of the first size A's that I had knitted. And this was a pattern wasn't from Knitted Knockers because this pattern had nipples on it. And um, although knitknockers.org also has patterns that you can use, you know, crochet, uh, crochet or knit the nipple in, this organization that I originally found the pattern from was knittedknockers.info, and they're pretty picky about which yarns they approve. There's only I think one or two that's on their list. And Knitted Knockers accepts a few others that are a little more economical in price because when I tried to send them a pair that I had made out of Universal DK Supreme cotton, they refused to accept them, which that's one of the items that's listed in uh, on knittedknockers.org. They were fine with it. And of course the women that I've given those to find them absolutely acceptable. In fact, they've often been repeat um, clients. But this first pair in the pattern it said when you got finished to stuff them firmly. And stuff I did. Now keep in mind, these are supposed to be a size A cup. When you see the picture, you're going to laugh because boy, did I stuff them. It just, they just weren't getting firm. <laughs> and, you know, when you're first starting out, sometimes you don't know what exactly they meant. Maybe I should have just addressed them firmly and said, now we will begin the stuffing process. But no, I didn't do that. I just kept stuffing and stuffing and stuffing. Of course, card players at the fire hall, when I laid them down, they got to laughing because I was like, those look like cup-sized C 
cups by Tamagata and stuffing them. So we had a good laugh about my first attempt at firmly stuffing those cups. Um, not a whole lot going on here. Like I said, we went and got our groceries, and of course today we also decided that, that there must be something going on because as we got off the interstate, there were quite a few. There was a state trooper and a local um, Belfort police officer at the exit off the interstate. And so we're sitting here trying to figure out what day it is. You know, I'm like, well, it's not Earth Day, so they can't be having, you know, Penn State does a big thing with Earth Day, usually. And I thought, that's tomorrow. So then we got to thinking, Penn State does a blue and white game every year. And apparently this is the weekend and this was the day. We always try to come in and get our groceries and do our shopping around Penn State's games. Because if you don't, many times traffic is just horrendous. You know, they've just got that one or two ways in and it's hard getting past Beaver Stadium at times. But we managed, and of course, then we got to our favorite place to eat, Mexican restaurant, Rey Azteca in State College. And our waitress, she was like, man, I don't know what's going on. Because when you looked out in the parking lot, there weren't very many cars. But Penn State does this thing where they bring people in on the, the school buses for games and things. So apparently the folks were going over and, you know, parking over in the Walmart parking lot and walking over to eat lunch. So they were kind of getting slammed and didn't understand why at first. They forgot about the game as well. Happens. But we managed to get through with everything. And I believe it might actually be spring. Um, saw three groundhogs. Of course, one of them was dead in the middle of the highway. And uh, another one was chomping away on the side and then saw the cutest little, tiniest little groundhog I've ever seen. Must have been a baby peeking out of the hole. I guess Mama had sent him out to see if the Red Hawks were out there. Okay, I'm kidding, folks. But then again, you never know. You know? So, seeing that, and generally that means spring is well on the way. This week at the fire hall, we were talking about how it must be, you know, Tuesday, the day that we went over and did our sewing class, that um, must be the, hoping every, everybody's hoping that it's the onion snow. What is an onion snow? I have no clue. Apparently, it is the snow to let you know that the winter season is over and it's okay to plant your onions. I don't know why they call it that. Because I would think, you know, if you planted your onions too early anyway, and then it snowed a little later, you know, and you thought the other was the onion snow. I haven't gotten a good answer from anybody about how you can absolutely tell whether it's the onion snow or not. Um, do any of your areas have little sayings like that about things, about the spring? That is one thing that I have found in this area that is one of the most interesting things, I think, is that onion snow thing. Everybody says, oh, we haven't had our onion snow yet. What is that? So, it's no fun when you're an outsider and you come in and you got no clue. I'm almost to the end there. Alright folks, I'm going to go. And I will see you tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is an Earth Day. Earth Day. So don't run your cars too long. Do something to help save the planet. I'll see you tomorrow.
Bye. You know I love Scraps and Skeins, and this is one of the reasons. These were all in the free box. They had quite a few of red colors, and they had some baby yarns. But I don't really like working with baby yarn, so I just grabbed these. And you know, it'll go a long way because I'm working on that one with the browns and the tans. The white I'll probably save for later, do a hat with it. You know, hats for the babies. And add some color. So yeah, that's why I love this door.